Okay, in this video segment, this is kind of an addition to the last couple of uh, videos uh, that were done about the thread cutting attachment. This is going to pertain to those that have uh, a lathe that's equipped with a digital readout and they wish to uh, install the thread cutting attachment or they have the thread cutting attachment and they wish to install a DRO because there's some several there's several parts that need to be changed to make that work with with the two uh, entities on the lathe and the first thing we're going to do is basically take the whole uh, thread cutting assembly off And then we're going to take the base off. And then what we're going to do is um, remove um, part of the lead screw engagement mechanism. Remember, just loosen this one a little bit just so the uh, shaft slides out. And that's the part that's going to get replaced. But in, the, in, uh, in lieu of the digital readout, there's also a part that is a little bit different. And that is the main thrust collar. So you have to remove the hand wheel. And remove this one screw. And then just slip the thrust collar support off. Remember there is a little washer that's between the end of the lead screw and the thrust collar. So you want to put that back on. Don't dismantle anything else, it's unnecessary. Now the differences here in the thrust collar is you can see one's a little taller than the other. And what happens in this situation is the lead screw is actually pulled farther away from the headstock. So what has to happen there is this needs to be a little bit longer. If you try using this with the digital readout, it probably won't engage the lead screw, which is why we came out with uh, this uh, additional part here. It's part number 81509. And I'll show you the difference in it. It is just slightly longer by about a sixteenth of an inch. That's all that was required. You'll know you have that part because there is a very distinctive groove cut into it. Okay, well now what we're going to do is now that we got it all apart, uh, you want to replace the factory uh, uh, lead screw support thrust collar with the digital readout one if you haven't already done that with uh, having a DRO set up already. We'll go ahead and slide that on. And reinstall the screw back in. And at this time, uh, we'll put the DRO hand wheel on it as well. Oops. Don't forget your little shim washers.
no slop or backlash in it, which is the way you want it, yet it turns nice and smooth. Now we go to the other end and take the, the new sliding shaft with the groove cut into it. Uh, short end in first. Line up your slot with the screw hole and tighten the top one back down. Making sure it didn't catch it. Spins freely. And you'll want to pull the lever out of the base before you put it back on. And reinstall your screws. Having done that, let's see if I get lucky here. Yeah, look at that. And there you can see it's engaged, disengaged, engaged, and you're good to go. Put all your uh, thread cutting attachment and your headstock back on, and you're ready to rock and roll. Now that the uh, engagement lever has been installed and it's working correctly, um, you can go ahead and go on to uh, uh, mounting the uh, screw cutting attachment. However, if you experience difficulty with it still engaging or disengaging, there's a couple of adjustments and things you can do to alleviate that problem. And the first thing we'll do is I'll, I'll show you exactly where you can do that. As you turn the machine over again, and one method is loosening the two screws. And if you're having difficulty disengaging it, you want to move the base that way a little bit. If you're having trouble engaging it, you want to move the base that way a little bit. If that still doesn't work for whatever reason, This would pretty much be only for when it's not uh, engaging. Now, in the, earlier in the video, I talked about this washer that has to go in here between the lead screw and the uh, lead screw support. If it's not engaging, what you can do is you can add the real thin shim washers or another one of the washers that are in there to bring the lead screw back a little bit. Uh, to engage it a little more firmly uh, with the sliding shaft. Um, other than that, you should not ex experience any trouble, but uh, that's uh, a couple of quick uh, adjustment procedures if you uh, still uh, experience difficulty with uh, engagement or disengagement. Some customers have reported the following problem with the lead screw engagement lever over the years. The lead screw location is too far away from the sliding shaft. When the engagement lever is turned towards the tailstock to engage the lead screw, it is going too far and the tooth on the sliding shaft is coming out of the engagement lever slot. To fix this, as covered in the previous troubleshooting segments, you have to move the lathe base towards the tailstock. This shifts the engagement lever towards the end of the lead screw, or you have to move the lead screw towards the engagement lever. This is accomplished by adding a second washer to the lead screw. If everything is good, the sliding shaft will engage with the lead screw and the engagement knob will stop moving at about the 2 o'clock position. However, if the engagement knob goes beyond that point, then the knob will disengage from the sliding shaft. Please note that the sliding shaft should disengage from the lead screw when the engagement lever knob is at about the 10 o'clock position. So the full range of motion for the engagement lever, when everything is aligned correctly, is from 10 to 2 o'clock.